Hello everybody, Rebel Cody here, and welcome to our first lesson in bioinformatics in Python. Today we're gonna start working on our DNA toolkit. We're gonna write our first two functions, and we're also gonna take a look at how we can store DNA data in dictionaries and lists in Python, how to pass it on to a function, and how to get meaningful results out of it. Just to start off, if you don't know how DNA double helix is structured and how nucleotides bind to each other, I would strongly recommend watching this amazing and beautiful video. It's only six minutes long, but it has amazing animations and explanation of how that stuff works, especially the part at around two minutes. I'm gonna leave a, a link in the description below and you should be able to see a link right now in your video. We are definitely gonna need that knowledge to develop more complex algorithms. So if you don't know how DNA is structured, Please watch that video before you continue. So now we're gonna go to our project and let's see how it is structured. And access to this project will also be available via GitHub link and they're gonna leave that in the description below. So let's take a look at two files we have in our project. A main.py, where we're just gonna be testing our code that we write and DNA toolkit.py, that is going to be our main file. We're gonna populate that file with a lot of cool functionality, and we're gonna be testing that. We're gonna be including DNA toolkit.py in our main.py and testing that functionality before we commit and before we can actually use it. So without further ado, let's start working in our DNA toolkit. First thing we need is a list of four nucleotides, and we're gonna define it just like that adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. We're going to be reusing that list in our functions. And the first function we're going to write is going to be a validate sequence function. Let me copy and paste that from our snippets here, and let's talk about it. Why do you need a validate sequence function? Imagine you are working with a DNA data that is coming from some TXT file, some CSV file, or an online database. You just have to make sure that it is a valid DNA string, meaning it does not contain any unexpected characters and only has those four nucleotides, A, C, G, T, or a combination of those four nucleotides. If it is not, it's not a valid DNA string, and we're not interested in working with it. So our validate seek, which sequence for short, function accepts a string, then it creates a temporary string, which is uppercase, and then we just loop through each character in that string to make sure it is one of these four characters. If it is not, if it is at least one character does not match, break out of the loop and we're going to return false because we're not interested in working with the string anymore because it has it has at least one invalid character and if all the characters match just fine then we're going to return an uppercase version so why would we need an uppercase uh, version of that string it is because lowercase a is not equals to an uppercase a and lowercase c is not equals to an uppercase c etc in ascii table right so we just have to make sure that we're comparing all of the uppercase characters. Okay, let's try testing our function. We're gonna switch to main.py file. We're gonna be testing all of our functionality. We're gonna need to include the stuff from DNA toolkit.py into our main.py file, of course, and let's do a total include. Import everything, star means everything. Now we just need to create a random DNA string so we can test our function, which will validate that string. So let's create an RND. So random DNA string. And now we can start calling our function. Let's call our function validate sequence. And we're going to give that random string to it. And of course we want to print out the result, right? Because it has a return value. Let's see what comes back. Save, run. Okay, so we get back exactly the same string as we passed to it. And that makes sense, right? So we pass a string, it makes it an uppercase, even though it's already an uppercase. It goes through the loop, make sure all of the characters match one of these characters, and then they do, and it just returns our temporary list uppercase. So that's correct. Let's try testing the false statement. Let's introduce a 
character X, which is an invalid character. It's not A, T, C, or G. Let's save that and run, and we're getting false. Great, our function works, and we will be able to pass on correct DNA strings to our functions we write in the future. One other thing we can test is make sure that it makes the string in uppercase. So let's do a mixed case string here. I'm going to save that and run. And what we should get is a string all uppercase. That's great. So our first function is up and running and it's tested and it works. Now we have our first function running and we have tested with three scenarios and all scenarios pass as expected. Now, Let's add one more cool feature to that. Instead of defining DNA string by hand every time, we can make it generate a random DNA string. How can we do that? We can use Python's random module. Let's import it first. And let's generate a random string every time we run main.py file. And let me copy and paste one of my snippets right here. So here we have a choice method from random module. And all we do is we, we're telling it, here's a list of nucleotides, which we have in our toolkit file. That's the list. So we give that list to that function and we tell it, just loop 20 times and pick a random character from our list. So I'm just going to generate a random DNA string. Of course, we have to maybe change this here too. Let's try running it and see what comes out. So we run it once twice, three times, four times, five times. So as you can see, this creates a random DNA string from 20 characters. We can change it, let's say to 50, and we can see it changes the length of our string. Now we have a 50 nucleotide long DNA string here. All right, so let's go to our second function, which is a count nucleotide frequency function. Let me copy and paste that from my snippets right here. And that is going to be our first function that actually does something with the DNA. Okay, so we're going to call this function count nuke frequency. And we're going to pass it a string, which we validated beforehand. We're going to define a temporary frequency dictionary here. So again, you will have to know how dictionaries work and you can go back to Corey's YouTube channel that I mentioned in my introduction video, and he has a very good explanation on how dictionaries work. That's basically a very fast hash map. Why do we define it like that? Of course, we can create an empty dictionary right here and have a for loop with a lot of logic saying if it doesn't, if a key does not exist, create it and only then increment its value. But instead, we're going to create it this way so our for loop is nice and clean. So all we do here is we loop through the string that we passed. And if it's A, we're going to use nucleotide A, and we're going to increase that value. If it's nucleotide C, we're going to increase this value. If we're going to come across nucleotide A in our string again, we're going to increase that value, and it's going to be 2. So, and we're going to return the temporary dictionary in the end. Let's do a test here. So, now we're going to print out the result of that function. It is called count, so we can actually see here, and we're going to pass our random string to it as well. So let's see what happens. Okay, so our first line, which is calling a validate sequence, returns this sequence. Of course, it's correct. And the second line here returns this. So A is 19 times. C has been found 7 times, G has been found 11, and T has been found 13. Yeah, we can, uh, I mean, it's a bit too much to count, but let's say C is 7 times. We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And let's do the smallest one here, G. And G is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is correct. Now, we have this validate function. We did not really use it here. Let's do this, which is a much better way. So we're going to call it a final DNA string, or just let's say DNA str. And we're going to make it equals to a validated sequence. Okay. And then we're going to be passing this in all of our functions. 
just to make sure that all of our functions like count nucleotide frequency on all the other functions are working with the correct DNA string. So let's run it again just to make sure it all works. Now we're not printing out the validated sequence, but of course we are printing out our count. Okay. So one small thing we can also do, which is not really important, we can take a look at our count frequency function here and we can try thinking, can we actually optimize it? Um, it is a small function. It doesn't really need any optimizations, but there is a module called collections in Python and we can basically make one line out of all of these four lines. I'm going to show you that right now, but again, it's not necessary. It's a bit more complicated than just these um, four lines with a for loop, but let's see how it actually works. So what we can do, we can include, sorry, import collections. Now, collections has this method, which is called count. Let's try replacing this with one line. Return. And of course, it needs to be casted to a dictionary because it returns a, an object file. Collections. And we're going to use our count counter. And we're going to give it our sequence that we just passed. Sorry, sequence. Okay. So yeah, we had four lines. We replaced it with just one line. And let's see if it actually still works as expected. Okay. Yep, it returns the same result. I guess it's up to you if you understand how counters work or you've looked at the videos of how counters work in Python. You can use that as long as you understand. But we're going to comment this out for now. We don't actually need that. This is nice and clean and easy to understand, which I guess is more important than just optimizing it. But again, if you want to optimize some stuff and you have a deep understanding of what these functions do, you can always do that. All right, so this is it for this lesson. Today we wrote our first two functions. We validated the DNA string and we counted nucleotides in that validated string. We've also used main.py file to test our functionality just to make sure it all works as expected. I will leave a GitLab link in the description so you can see our first lesson already committed. It was validate DNA and count nucleotides. So you can always pull down the latest version of the lessons just to take a look at them. If you're not familiar with GitLab or Git, I suggest, again, Corey's channel. He has an amazing video on how Git works. So we're going to be committing all of the lessons to this repository in the case if you need to go back and look at the lessons we did before. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Join and help to build our Telegram bioinformatics community. And for more in-depth discussions, please join our Matrix server. If you have enjoyed these lessons and they have helped you in any way, I would appreciate a thumbs up and please share these videos with anyone who might find them useful too. And of course, any help and contributions through PayPal, cryptocurrencies or Patreon are always welcome. All of the links are in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in the upcoming videos. Until next time, Rebel Coder, signing out.